right? A uh, very uh, fine evening. What a great Sunday, right? Uh, so let's have this discussion, the last discussion of general studies. Means 2022. Hope that in the next year you'll be writing these type of uh, questions, right? Everyone who is listening to this video, I expect you to write uh, next year mains. So we'll be discussing the same thing in a similar fashion. But nonetheless, before going into that discussion, let me uh, quickly deal with why uh, ethics paper, general studies paper 4 of the uh, uh, UPSC mains 2022 is quite testing, not only of 2022, but even of 2021, 2019. Writing this paper is very challenging in two grounds. One ground is now consistently for the past two, two days, an aspirant is tested to write the answers. And let's say a day you are asked to write uh, 2,500 words, in the next day, you are asked to write almost 50 to 50 pages. General studies paper 150 pages, general studies paper 250 pages, general studies paper 350 pages. So consistently, day uh, forenoon and afternoon, forenoon and afternoon, you were tested to write the exam. That is the ability that UPSC tests us. So many students do fail in the first game itself. That is the game of having that uh, attention in the five days, in the five uh, general studies papers to write the answers and then come out uh, substantially by answering all the questions. This is the first test where many of us fail, right? And as the days are going by, when it comes to today, that is the second day, forenoon, uh, afternoon session, right? It is very tiring because uh, we will get exhausted by this point of time. By today afternoon, we'll get exhausted. Look at uh, the best example is look at how many students were present in our online session uh, when we were conducting. On the first day, there were 22. On the last day, there was only around 10 people. Now, what does this mean? Just to listen to the class, we, we are taking time. Now, when we go into that stage, in order to write it, all the 20 questions within that limited period of time, it is really testing. Something which is really unimaginable, which is, which is not present in any other exam per se, but that you have in UPSC. So kudos to all the people who have written this uh, uh, exam so far, all the five papers successfully, right? And the first major requirement is if you want to clear this exam, simple thing is you should not leave even one question. That is a simple thing. So you have to write all the questions. I hope everyone has to write this. The second thing, why GS paper four is difficult is the lengthy of the paper. You know, unlike your GS paper one, two, three, this paper is a bit lengthy. What do I mean by lengthy paper? Look at your GS paper 1, GS paper 2, GS paper 3, GS paper 4. There will be only 4 pages, which means there will be 10 marker, 15 marker, entire thing will be 4 pages. But look at ethics paper. Ethics question paper itself will be of 14 to 15 pages. 14 to 15 pages. 10 pages greater than your another GS papers. And in the booklet that UPSC gives, for general studies, they will give you a booklet anywhere around 50 pages to 55 pages. But for essay writing, they give you around 66 pages or 65 pages. Within three hours, it is very difficult to fill that 50 pages. Now imagine your game is till to the next 15 pages. On one side, you are tired, you are, you are exhausted. On the other side, you are tested to go through uh, some lengthy paper. Obviously, today also, uh, more or less just like UPS is continuing the trend unlike uh, when it has introduced the so-called ethics paper in the 2014 right now what UPSC is doing is ethics paper length was increased substantially to read the questions itself it takes time leave about writing right so and again you have seven minutes and nine minutes to write the answers seven minutes are particularly 12 minutes for writing a 20 marker but the number of questions overall is going to be around 30 right uh, sorry, not around 13, they are going to be 19. 13 from the so-called theory, 6 questions from the so-called case studies. Anyways, in general studies, you have 20 questions. Here, there are 19 questions in total, but the paper length is difficult. That makes us to have less time in this paper. So many students face the first challenge in uh, this one is, you are already exhausted and your exhaustiveness and your exhaustiveness is adding one challenge for your preparation and that is your exhaustiveness is adding one challenge for your preparation and that challenge is and that challenge is 
reading the question paper within time reading the question paper within time that is the challenging aspect so the paper is going to be lengthy right I, we thought that we will conduct this class at 5.30 but we extended it to 5.45 because when we are analyzing it is taking time for us itself to analyze the paper to come out what is the dimension that is present here, how it is different from the previous year questions, what is the trend in order to just analyze with the people it is taking us for, as for 30 minutes, it took us for 30 minutes that is the reason why I extended the time from 5.30 to 5.45 pm otherwise the rest of the GS papers it took us not more than 10 minutes or 8 minutes the entire team has worked really well on this. So let me go into this aspect first. How is this paper, GS paper board of uh, UPSC is? What is the trend that it has been continuing? And what are the changes? It takes some time to discuss this paper unlike your GS papers. Let's focus, have that patience. Let's start uh, with this now. First thing first, general studies paper four, four also known as paper five. Right, if you include ethics, essay writing. So, ethics, integrity, and aptitude, you have these things. This paper will include questions to test candidates' approach to integrity, probity in life. So, this is what the cautions that syllabus is carrying. Many people don't read this, we'll just read the syllabus, but this is the two cautions that you have to remember uh, what UPSC is asking. The next one is the syllabus component. You have ethics in human life, and then you have the so called ethics in public services ethical issues in corporate funding, corporate governance, property in governance, case studies along with the so-called emotional intelligence, right. These things is the question and then you have something called uh, the question paper itself. Now look, every year, let's try to understand this, every year UPSC is asking 10 markers, there are 13 questions. 10 markers, 13 questions. How? In every question, they will give A and B, A and B. Right? In one question, they will give A, B, C. So there will be 6 questions. The 5th question or the 3rd question will be having A, B, C. Which means, 1st question will be having A, B. 2nd question A, B. 3rd question A, B, C. 4th question A, B. 5th question A, B. 6th question A, B. Each A and B have 10 markers. Like that there are 13 questions which makes 130 right the rest of the 120 marks will be from case studies case studies 120 marks each case study will be of 20 marks as a result there will be six case studies and the paper becomes difficult because each a and b will be lengthy right the question question will be lengthy particularly the case studies will be very very lengthy in order to understand that sir why is not much audible Can you check now? Can you check whether my voice is audible or not? Cut care. Thanks for informing because I am recording it. Can you check it now? Be quick. Is it audible now? The response system is too low. Now it is okay. Thank you, Karthikeya. Right. So. So there are 13 questions here and 6 questions here, totally it makes 19 questions for 250 marks, case studies is for 120 marks, the rest of the questions are for uh, 10 marker, 13, 10 marker is there. Now let's look at the first question itself. So these are the 10 marker, 1 AB, 2 AB, 3 ABC, 4 AB, 5 AB, 6 AB, from 7th question this is case studies, that is what I said, right. Today uh, also they maintain the same trend, they didn't change much of this pattern. Now, Let's go with the so-called first question. Wisdom lies in knowing what to reckon with and what to overlook. An officer being engrossed with the periphery, ignoring the core issue before him is not great in the bureaucracy. So this is the statement. Do you agree that such preoccupation of an administrator leads to travesty of justice, to the cause of effective service delivery and good governance critically evaluated? In order to understand this question, leave about writing. In order to understand itself, it takes 4 minutes to 5 minutes, right? So, this is the uh, difficulty in ethics paper. Wisdom lies in knowing what to record with and what to overlook. So, that's completely fine. That is wisdom. We know this. An officer being engrossed with the periphery, 
during the core issue before him is not trading bureaucracy, which means you find officers who will be not focusing on the so-called the core aspects, but they will be revolving around the so-called periphery, just like our preparation. We'll be revolving around the peripheries by reading some materials outside market uh, test series like this, but not focusing on the so-called core values. Do you agree that such preoccupation of an administrator leads to travesty of justice to the cause of effective service delivery and good governance? Now they are asking, do you agree that preoccupation of an administrator only on the periphery is going to harm justice or it is not going to have effective service delivery and good governance? Now, they are asking you to critical evaluate. Yes, at times if you are just focusing on the so-called core, then that is going to, uh, if you are focusing only on the periphery, you are missing the core. If you are missing, if you are looking at the core, you will be missing at the periphery. Best example, take from uh, Jharkhand example. Right, in Jharkhand, uh, a girl was, a poor girl was not given the ration as a result that girl passed away because of starvation. Now, why? The bureaucracy is looking at the core components that is whether you are having the other card or not at that point of time then this is going to be a very difficult thing but at the same time if you just look at the so-called periphery if you don't look at the so-called beneficiaries uh, correct beneficiaries then you are going to miss the component itself so you can write some examples here and there and then you can write critically evaluate yes at times it is correct um, at times you have another thing so what is the thing that you have to write if a bureaucrat should have both attitude, the bureaucratic attitude as well as political, as well as the so-called democratic attitude, then it is going to help. So wisdom. Now this is speaking about that thing, you have to write that answer. Apart from intellectual competency and moral qualities, empathy and compassion, direct question from empathy and compassion. Empathy and compassion are vital attributes to facilitate the civil servants to be more competent in tackling the crucial issues of taking critical decisions, explain with suitable examples. Now they have given a big, big question just to divert you, just to kill your time. Now come directly, they are asking empathy and compassion are important along with intellectual com competency and moral qualities. Now there was a previous year question, a similar type of question if you do remember, right? What is the question? You have also written that. Uh, intellectual competency along with the so-called compassion and ethics are important for an civil servant. If you just have intellectual competency without the so-called ethics, it is not going to be useful. So they are asking that a combination of empathy, compassion, intellectual competency and moral qualities are required to compete or to take crucial decisions. They are asking with suitable examples. You have written already. This is a previous year question, but the question was changed in its sentence formation, but the essence is same. Right? It is asking that we should have intellectual compatibility, we should have moral qualities along with empathy and compassion towards weaker sections. So a combination of these things are important. Now you can study this under which concept? This is aptitude for a civil servant. For the aptitudes of civil servant, this is important. Hence, by looking at the question, you have to go to that uh, uh, subject called aptitude in decision making, or uh, aptitude for a civil servant, integrity, impartiality, non-partitionship, empathy, sympathy, compassion for work towards weaker sections. So these things are taken from that. Hence, the question is regarding that. So it is asking that they are the holistic values of civil servant and now they are asking that question. So this is second question, a previous year question, if you do understand this context. Second question, the rules and regulations provided to all the civil servants are safe, yet there is a difference in their performance. Positive minded officers are able to interpret the rules and regulations in favor of the case and achieve success, whereas negative minded officers are unable to achieve rules by interpreting the same rules and regulations against the case, discussed with illustrations. Now, again, they are asking you to give some examples, but let's try to understand or fit this question into the syllabus. Now, this is about thinking, right? Rules and regulations are same, but positive attitude, negative attitude, attitude, mind means attitude, cognitive, affective, behavior component, right? Now, behavior of some civil servants is somewhat different. The way in which they show the consequences is different compared to some others. Why? The way in which they analyze their cognitive component will be made up of positive mindset or negative mindset. That is the thing. So this question is directly tackling with the so-called attitude uh, syllabus. In attitude, you have uh, this one, right? Positive mind and negative mind. Now, this is a similar type of question from the previous year again. In previous year questions, if you do realize, there was one question which was said by Napoleon Bonaparte, right? They have given this uh, statement, right? Uh, if I do exactly remember this, uh, this one, great ambitions are made up of great passion, great uh, uh, character. Now, this great character will do two things. That is either it may be positive or negative. 
so the actions are going to be positive or negative depending upon how you are processing it how your values are made with so a similar question was asked here again the content is same the question style of asking is different same question was asked earlier or it is just asking how positive attitude or negative attitude are going to make difference in the so called behavior this is thought and behavior the relation between thought and behavior there is one component in syllabus they have asked that directly that question right so this is the question that they asked influence of attitude with thoughts and behavior this is the question that they asked right now one question is attitude of civil servants i miss one thing aptitude in aptitude they asked one question right so that is what they have asked now it is believed that adherence to ethics in human actions would ensure in smooth functioning of an organization or a system if so what does ethics seek to promote in human life how do ethical values assist in the resolution of conflicts faced by him or her in day to day functioning ethics in human values human interface ethics and human interface a direct question from the first topic of the syllabus determinants of ethics or consequences of ethics in human actions right they are asking in human actions human actions can be personal it can be private it can be public personal means to the individual private means to his family uh, public means to the society now they are asking what is the essence of ethics this it is believed that adherence to ethics in human actions ethics in human actions first chapter would ensure in smooth functioning of an organization in so far what does ethics seeks to promote in human life what is the essence of ethics in human life and how ethical values assist in the resolution of conflict making in the day to day functioning how ethics is helping you so they are asking you to write some uh, of this so ethics in human actions is the thing if you know that component you can write this answer third component what does each of the following quotation means now where is this component of your syllabus this is from lessons from the lives of great people great reform great people reformers social administrators and then uh, the so called thinkers from the world and india there is one syllabus in this right in syllabus you have that thing so they have taken this question lessons from the lives of teachings of great leaders reformers and administrators now i already said when i was discussing ethics with you people that if a question is being asked from this section they will give you quotations and they will ask you to explain what that that statement mean there are three questions in this obviously every year they are asking three now one is of potter stewart ethics is knowing the difference between what you have the right to do and what is right to do now they are asking ethics is what you have the right to do and what is right to do it mean ethics is making choices so what does this statement mean to you so they are asking uh, what does this statement mean to you now you can write this statement in various dimensions ethics means uh, in life there will be uh, two things called good and bad and taking that action ethics is helping you something called to overcome conflict of interest it is helping you to overcome cognitive dissonance cognitive dissonance day before yesterday in 13th september in the newspaper carried it okay now so ethics is helping you to do that so you can write various dimensions and you write with some examples how to write these type of quotations take the quotation and apply this in various parts of the syllabus ethics is knowing the difference between what you have the right to do and what is right to do now ethics is helping you what does this mean ethics is helping you in conflict resolution uh, such as conflict of interest cognitive dissonance in order to make choices or in order to lead a comfortable life right so ethics is this now you can write some examples what you have the right to do and what is right to do which means what exactly is ethics it is saying you so different interpretations can be occurred here i can interpret this in my way you can interpret this in your way but where we will all convert we will all convert in the examples that we give right now this is apj abdullah kalam sport same question was repeated earlier those who have studied my uh, ethics classes right when i discussed if a country has to be corruption free and become a nation of beautiful minds i strongly feel that there is three three social elements who can make the differences they are the father the mother and the teacher same question repetitive question right today there are many repetitive questions in this economy and here right one positive attitude now 
judges judge your success by what you have to give up in order to get it dalai lama so this is speaking about sacrifice right judge your success by what you had to give up in order to get it right sacrifice what you have to give up in order to get it because everything will have one thing called opportunity cost so if you are preparing for civil services by leaving your jobs then judge your success on what you are for going rather than what you are uh, uh, what you are getting right so judge your success this can be interpreted in different ways i can interpret this in swami vivekananda's quotation i can interpret the same thing in arvind bose's quotations right so this differs again here so give some examples and write okay this quotation means to me like this in my personal life this quotation means like this in my private life this quotation means this in my public life this quotation means this so write uh, various dimensions what does this statement to you so they are asking what does this mean to you so whenever they ask these type of questions write what it means to you in your personal life what it means to you in your private life what it means to you in your public life these three things are important then write in that context fourth question what do you understand by the term good governance direct question good governance how far recent initiatives in terms of e governance steps taken by the state have helped the beneficiaries so e technology in the aid of government discuss with suitable examples e governance is available in your gs paper 2 as well as in gs paper 4 hence this is a very simple thing you can write some examples of e governance that government of india has taken up and then you can substantiate your answers right this is what the question is a direct question a very simple question fourth b online methodology is being used for day to day meetings institutional approvals in the administration and for teaching and learning in education sector to the extent telemedicine in the health sector is getting popular with the approvals of the competent authority now why they have given this much big sentence to drain your brain and to drain your time no doubt it has advantages and disadvantages for both the beneficiaries and the system at large describe and discuss the ethical issues involved in the use of online method particularly to the vulnerable sections of the society now had they not given this also the question will be the same had they given this also the question remains same idantha oka technique anamata mana time waste cheyadaniki idantha pakkana mettesi ikka nunchi question jarugochu describe and discuss the ethical issues involved in the online method of particular discuss the ethical issues involved in the use of online method particularly the vulnerable sections of the society again you can take the content from how online is helping you right there was previous year question also the data that you are getting from online is not reliable sometimes at times it is reliable so they asked the similar question previous year also so you can write in that context if you look at previous year questions if we have analyzed the previous year questions these type of questions are going to be easy next fifth question is russia and ukraine war ethics in international relations russia and ukraine war has been going on for the last 7 months different countries have taken independent standards stance and actions keeping in view their own national interests we are all aware that war has its own impact on the different aspects of society including human tragedy now this is again that exercise right what are those ethical issues that are crucial to be considered while launching the war and its continuation so far illustrate with justification the ethical issues involved in the uh, given state of affairs so what they are asking what are the ethical issues look at the beauty of the question that they asked right what are those ethical issues that are crucial to be considered while launching the war which means if you want to launch a war they are not saying that you refrain from war they are saying that yes war can be happening at times now what are those ethical issues that are crucial to be considered yes obviously national interest has to be first one kautilya says this machiavelli says this right national interest really say the same thing uh, for the king the most important duty is to protect the kingdom and his subjects as a result war is very crucial at times when it is challenging the territorial integrity of the country or the life and uh, property of the people it is a threat then the country is is ethical or the king is ethical to go for the war right you can write these type of cases now why they have given this question because of this two context look at the india's stand in foreign policy india's stand in foreign policy is somewhat uh, realistic in its approach which means we are not shying away from going to war in some areas for example take balakot strike that we have conducted right so 
Uri terror attacks, right? These type of things that has been the India's proactive approach was linked here. Now they are also linked India's stand on the so-called Ukraine war that India didn't uh, uh, force Russia to be the so-called uh, to move away from the war. Except yesterday's meeting in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting, our Prime Minister Modi has directly indicated Putin to stop the war. But unless for the past seven months. Right, we did not speak out directly to the so-called Mr. Putin. That is the reason why they have moderated the statement with India's context itself. This is the beauty in UPSC. Look, it's constitutional so far. Illustrate with justification the ethical issues involved in the given state of affairs. Now they are saying that yes, Russia has went into the Ukraine war, <coughs> but there are some ethical issues which are considered here. Now they are asking what is the ethical issues. Already you have written this answer that is called what are the ethical issues. That are crucial to be considered while launching a war, protecting your national interest, territorial integrity. Right, this is important. For example, Pakistan occupied Kashmir. That is very important for us. But uh, China and uh, uh, Pakistan are going with CEPA, which was being added by the so-called Afghanistan. Also, in that circumstances, we are pushed to the so-called war. We have to defend our territory. Similarly, Ukraine was Russia was pushed to the territory from the so-called NATO forces. As a result, they went into the so-called war. So they are asking you to compare both, and they are asking you. Uh, to give a realistic outlook, right? One thing is, they are not saying away from saying that war is a crime, right? They are saying that look at the positive aspects of the war, at times it is very crucial. A very pragmatic question, which is related to your international relations. This is again something which we can expect. One question from Russian Ukraine war is expected in this means, and they have asked it here. In international relations, we can expect this, but here they have asked. But for those who are writing in political science and international relations, they will ask a different question again on Russia Ukraine war. Now, so this is the thing, a very simple question again. The only thing is we should understand where to pick up the answer and where to leave it. Now, fifth B. Write a short words on the following of 30 words each. 30 words, they are giving you two marks. Good. Constitutional morality, simple thing, following the morals of constitution, the philosophy of constitutionalism. It's called constitutional morality. What is the philosophy of constitutionalism? The rule of law, not the rule of men. So you can write anything like this, then it is going to give value to your answer. Conflict of interest, a direct question. Many times they have asked, conflict of interest is when your personal interest is overlapping with your private interest and it is getting overlapped with your public interest. Then that is called conflict of interest. You will not be in a position to decide whether I have to give importance to my personal values or the so-called private values or public values and that situation is called conflict of interest. It is one dilemma It can be solved by having a good ethical knowledge about in which situation you are present and doing the duty according to that situation. Probity in public life, direct question again, probity is uh, uh, an enlarged term of all the ethical values which encompasses all your values that is given in the syllabus that is called, that is called probity includes the so called Honesty, you include this apt, uh, uh, attributes of aptitude, integrity, honesty, impartiality, non-partisanship, uh, transparency, information, transparency. You can write, you can write that quality of service delivery. All this comes under probity of governance. So, probity is a larger term than honesty, which encompasses all the virtues of good governance right so you can write that this is again an expected question because directly from the syllabus it is there and we have to know this challenges of digitalization is okay how many times they ask challenges of digitalization they ask it here also right we have just seen what are the challenges in digitalization devotion to duty dedication to duty devotion to duty now they are asking you to write a short notes give some examples one example or two examples recently uh, um, uh, one of the uh, I, IPS officer uh, in a state like Bengaluru in the traffic jam, he has uh, uh, ran for three kilometers to deliver uh, a pregnant woman. Now this is called dignity, duty to dignity. So you can write devotion to dignity. You can write these type of examples and you can substantiate. Now remember whenever they ask this particular word and they ask you to explain, explain with some examples. In 30 words, you can allot five words for writing a sentence which is made up of the so-called example. So this is the fifth question. Again, question is very easy. Sixth question, whistleblowers who report corruption and illegal activities, wrongdoings and misconduct to the concerned authorities runs the risk of being exposed to grave danger 
physical harm and victimization by the vested interests, accused persons and his team. What policy measures would you suggest to strengthen the protection mechanism to safeguard the whistleblowers? Now this is something which is again killing your time and space. Now what policy measures do you suggest to strengthen the protection of protection mechanism of the so-called uh, whistleblowers? Right, protection mechanism. to safeguard the whistleblowers, whistleblowers act. So what are the things that you can expect? You can expect including a proper work culture. What are the policy measures to strengthen protection to safeguard whistleblowers? Give legal protection, increase the so-called uh, don't reveal the names of the persons, strictly implement whistleblowers protection act that was enacted in India, right? So legal sanctions is going to help and the people who and the one who is going to punish the so-called whistleblowers has to be dealt with uh, uh, stringent norms. Otherwise, they are going to be always under threat. So you can write again some substantial also. Now, why this is something easy? Because this was earlier question. They asked me similar question on whistleblowers uh, already in ethics itself. So this is very easy to write. Now, B. In the contemporary world, corporate sector. No, ethics in corporate corporate sector. In the contemporary world, corporate sector contribution in generating wealth and employment is increasing. In doing so, they are also they are bringing in unprecedented onslaught of the climate, environment, and sustainability, and living conditions of human beings. In this background, do you find that corporate social responsibility is the sufficient is sufficient enough to fulfill the social goals and responsibilities needed in the corporate world for which the CSR is mandated? Critical exam. Now the question is. Do you find that CSR is efficient and sufficient in order to balance the harm that it is doing? Obviously, 2% of the total profits that to your book profits that you have to show, you are, uh, you are just dedicating a paltry amount compared to the profits that you are getting. Now, they are asking whether it is really sufficient to go ahead with this critical exam. Now, on one side, you can argue that corporate social responsibility has to be voluntary, but making it as a legal sanction is something which is against the so-called ethical norms of governance. And at the same time, you can also say that corporates have their real responsibility because everyone is uh, responsible for, everyone has to always counter uh, uh, the harm that they are doing to the so-called society, right? You can write these type of things. CSR, corporate social responsibility, ethics in corporate governance. There is one uh, statement in your syllabus and the question is asked from this. So, we study this here itself, corporate governance. Whenever we study corporate governance, CSR, corporate social responsibility, study as a result, again, this question is not out of blue as such. Look at the, these are the six questions that they have asked. So, what is the uh, comment on these six questions? My comment on these six questions is, all the questions are a bit easy and manageable, except one or two, which is taking time to understand and implement. What is this uh, wisdom? The first one, it takes time to understand. Second one, that is 1B, direct question. 1C takes time, but only 1A and uh, 2A is taking time. 2B, direct question. 3, direct question. 4, something direct again. 5, direct questions. 6 is again a direct question. Right? So, one thing that I wanted to say as far as Theory. Until this, this is the theory. 13 questions, 10 marker, 130 questions. So you will be having a time of around one and a half hour to write this, which means 13 questions, 90 minutes. Right. Uh, 90 minutes. Where you will be getting around 8 minutes to write the answer. Now, the point here is when you are approaching this paper, the first thing, theory part. One thing that you have to know is you have to be very quick in understanding the question and reaching that part which the question is asking you. Immediately reach to that part where the question is focusing on and then you can derive some answer. That is the first thing. Understanding the question within a very short span is important. For that, you should be very quick at reading and you should focus on that aspect where the question is really present. That is the first thing. Second thing is immediately after understanding the question, link it to the so-called syllabus in which aspect of the syllabus the question is being asked. If you link that to the syllabus component, then your work is going to be very, very easy because in the syllabus, we'll be studying about that subject 
and you'll be using the same subject your analysis here. So linking it with the syllabus is very important. In order to link that with the syllabus, what is the important thing? You should know the syllabus. So that is the reason I always request my, stu my students to always remember the syllabus of all the papers, all the papers in a systematic manner analyze it and remember it in a systematic manner try to read the previous year questions analyze it and link with the syllabus then that exercise will help you a lot in tackling this type of problems right this is until 6a and 6b i hope you have got this uh, analysis right uh, in the next 40 minutes i will be discussing the so-called case studies there is one minute it will get snapped off i will just connect back here if you have any questions in this six questions you can ask me I will give one minute of time so that I reconnect you back. Any questions, anyone? Participants, Anu Arun Kumar, Banu Prakash Kapke, Kushmani Rawali, Rukmini Yamuna, 